I have about 100 devices in my Apple home, largely made up of Hue bulbs through the Hue bridge. A lot of devices are integrated through HomeBridge, including some virtual devices. And then I have some Matter over Wi-Fi devices and some Matter via bridge devices. But roughly one third of my devices are Matter over Thread. And we're having a look at those today. This is the Thread Smart Home Tour. I'm Patrick Hunt, and I want you to like smart home tech as much as I do. Real solutions with Matter, Apple Home, and a little creativity. Weekly, I'll show you how small upgrades can make a big difference. Welcome. I've done a couple of thread focused videos now and I'll link those in the description below. And of course my house isn't only thread devices, but I get really excited when brands invest in the protocol. And I thought maybe a thread smart home tour would inspire you to maybe get on board as well. So I'll try to put every product link below. Let's jump in. Almost poetically, we're starting exactly where my thread network began. And that is with the level bolt at the front door. Around December of last year, I started hounding Level to send me the firmware update to make my Bluetooth lock a matter over thread lock. I knew they were rolling it out slowly to devices and I just wanted to be one of the first. And I cannot emphasize this enough. The experience with this lock after the firmware update was night and day. And we also love it because it's an invisible smart home device. It is battery powered and I've probably changed the battery once or twice a year. Next up in the living room, we have two Nanoleaf A19 bulbs. They have full color range and they're just great starter bulbs for your thread network. I noticed upon installation, at least in Apple Home, that they took a little convincing to actually change with the scenes that I had created. There were some delays, sometimes one didn't change at all, but over time, they got in line. I actually have an old Hue button controller floating around this room that we gave to our 14 month old. He really loves buttons, so he'll just sit there and change the colors of the lights. So we've really put these lights through their paces and honestly, they kept up pretty well with his little fingers. The Eve Play is the first Eve device that we're coming to of several. Eve is going really hard with Thread right now and I love their products. So you'll see a lot of Eve stuff around the house as well as Ari and Inavelli. Those are the top three brands that I think I have the most products of. The Eve Play made my powered speakers AirPlay speakers. These speakers do support Bluetooth, aux out, and optical out, which is what I'm using now from the Eve Play. This is a great product to connect to an older surround sound receiver and make use of that analog out. It's also got an ethernet port to cut down on dropouts from Wi-Fi. In the dining room, we have the Eve dimmer switch. And this is the most modern switch that we have in the house. It's actually touch sensitive, so no real pressing actually happens unless you use the dimmer button on the side. It does require a neutral wire. So do not spend one to two hours trying to install this in your kitchen, only to finally read the instructions, which clearly state that it needs a neutral wire. This is a brand new dimmer switch. I like it a lot. Unfortunately, it looks like it's sold out on their website right now. Hopefully they get more stock soon. In the kitchen, we have our first Inavelli switch, and this is the white series switch that indicates that it's matter over thread. I did not want to put this switch in here. This is where I wanted to put that other Eve dimmer switch, but I don't have a neutral wire in this box. Now you might be asking yourself, how do I choose between the thread switches in my house? And there's a few ways. So the first way is that I actually want in continuity between the dining room and the kitchen. So I wanted to use the Eve dimmer switch in both the dining room and kitchen because they're back to back on these walls. The way I have it now, one of them is touch sensitive, one of them is a rocker, and I didn't want guests to get confused on how to use something as simple as a switch when they come into my house. But the other major reason I didn't want to put the Inavelli switch here in the kitchen is that it comes with a feature called smart bulb mode. And I didn't intend on putting any smart bulbs in any of the fixtures in the kitchen. Smart bulb mode just means that constant power can be passed through the switch to the lighting fixtures, allowing your smart bulbs to always have power so they can be turned on and off remotely. This is something that the Eve dimmer cannot do. So I kind of feel like I'm wasting the potential of the Inavelli switch by putting it here on bulbs that are not smart bulbs. I do use the favorites button to run our good night scene though, so that's nice. Moving to the family room, we really don't have a whole lot going on outside of all the toys. We do have our thread border router, which is the Apple TV. It is not connected via ethernet, and it doesn't seem to be having a major impact on the performance of our network. And then we have our first Ari button hidden here next to the couch. One button starts evening TV, which just turns the lights off in the kitchen and the dining room, turns the dim lights on in the family room, and plays the Apple TV. Two button presses, pauses the Apple TV and turns the lights on in the kitchen, which is usually for us to go and grab a snack or two. This is the only button I'll buy for the foreseeable future. I really don't want a hub and this button is extremely reliable. The placement of this one is pretty central in the network, but I have a couple other ones that are kind of on the outskirts, but we'll get there. Stepping outside briefly, we have another Nanoleaf A19 bulb. This one never gets touched. It runs entirely on automations. 
and it is rated for indoor use, but here we are four months later, still going strong. Now heading upstairs, we have the Eve Energy, which is connected to a random outlet with nothing plugged into it. This is typically for our Christmas tree, but I put it here when I was trying to make our thread network a little bit stronger several months ago and I never unplugged it. This is a little bit on the higher end, but the EVE app gives you pretty good insight into the energy usage of anything that you have plugged into it. Looking upward now, you will see the Nest Protect. This is not a thread device. And Google recently announced that they are discontinuing this, unfortunately. I think this device had about another five years on it, but who knows how long Google will actually support it. This sent me looking for alternate options, and I came across the Sincerio MS1. I believe this is the first of its kind, and it actually just officially launched like last week. I've had this installed for about a month, and I've had zero false alarms. It is battery powered, and it comes in at about $50. This is a great option to place several around your house where you don't need those all-in-one units, which come in at a much higher price point. In the future, they're looking to add a CO detector, a water leak detector, and a heat detector to their thread lineup, so I'm really looking forward to that. Moving now into the nursery, we have another Inovelli White Series switch, and again, White Series just indicates that it's matter over thread. This one is in smart bulb mode and it's connected to three Philips Hue bulbs. In smart bulb mode, it essentially just acts as a scene controller doing basically nothing through the physical wires outside of just getting power. And these buttons can all be mapped in the Apple Home app. One press, double press, and long press for a total of nine presses from this one switch. Closing the door, you'll see the RE contact sensor. Now you might think it's a little weird to have a contact sensor on an interior door, but it's not used for security. This helps immensely when we're creating conditions in automations. If we only want the automation to run when Connor is asleep and the door is closed, or if we want the automation to run when he's awake and the door is open. And again, Ari knocked this one out of the park. I really love this contact sensor and I actually really like that it's not gigantic. Hidden under the table here is another Ari button. I like my buttons in discrete places. This one runs Connor's goodnight scene, dimming some lights, turning others off, turning the hatch on. My wife actually uses this button a lot more than I do and the first time she used it, she said, okay, that was really cool because she was able to do all the things she usually does one by one with the press of one button. Across the hall in the bedroom, we come to the Inovelli fan switch, and this looks just like the Inovelli dimmer switch. Now this fan switch here and the Inovelli fan canopy module that's up in the fan both represent my biggest smart home headache. Inovelli says that the issues that I'm experiencing are actually limitations in Apple Home, and I'm not gonna get too far into it because it's just gonna make me mad. But I've had to do some automation gymnastics to get control of the different fan speeds, and the switch to not turn off the four nanoleaf bulbs that I have up there, but it's still not working right, and it looks pretty messy in Apple Home, and I'm not really happy with it. But I do know that people using Home Assistant have had a lot better experience than I have. So there's four more Nanoleaf A19 bulbs up there. I'm gonna keep buying these because they're cheap and they're reliable and I can stick them just about anywhere. On my nightstand, I have an Apple HomePod mini. I fucking hate this device. On my bedside table, I have an Apple HomePod mini. I actually just bought this a couple weeks ago. We were running Siri commands for about three months before ever getting a HomePod. And that's because we were doing it through our phone or through our watch, which honestly wasn't that bad. There's some delay when you try to do it through your watch, but if you just have your phone sitting on the table, it works pretty well and we'll probably get one to two more for the house in the future. In the closet here, we have the Eve motion sensor. So this will sense motion and then through an automation, we'll tell the Eve switch that's in here to turn the light on. And then the automation, after about three minutes or so, will then turn the light back off. Initially, when I set these devices up and was setting up the automations, I had an automation that when the motion sensor stopped detecting motion to turn the light off. But if I was standing in here looking at clothes and I was still for like two seconds, the light would shut off and that kept happening over and over. So this was a better solution. This switch is also touch sensitive and I like having it in here because guests will rarely interact with it. And I can kind of just smack the wall when I want to turn the light off. In the bathroom here, I installed another Inovelli fan switch. I had to put this exhaust fan on a smart switch to create the automation for this RE temp and humidity sensor to turn on when the humidity rose above a certain threshold. From the day I installed this, this has been the most rock solid automation in the entire house. It works like a charm. And then we have the last RE button in the house that's used for bath time. It puts on fun lights or changes them back to normal at the end of bath time. Now we're gonna run all the way down to the basement. 
Down here we have two sets of three-way switches. I used the Innovelli White Series switch for this because they also sell an auxiliary switch to accompany their smart switches. It looks just like their smart switch, which is great, but it is not a smart switch. And I'll be putting in Hue recessed lights throughout the basement in the future, and at that point, I'm gonna put these switches in smart bulb mode. Wiring these took me several hours, not because of the switch, but because the wiring in this house is absolutely nuts. Let's pop outside again real quick for the eve weather. This tells me the current temperature and humidity at our home. And this is something I can ask Siri to read out to me and include in automations and morning readouts. The barometric pressure is also available in the EVE app. This is one of the furthest thread devices from the network and it's only lost connection one time. And that was when I disconnected the Innovelli switches inside to show how the Smartwings roller shade would find a new route on the network. And the shade did, but unfortunately this guy was hung out to dry. The last stop on the tour is my office, where we come to one of my absolute most favorite devices in the house, and that is the Eve Flare. We actually call this my son's light because he kind of just smacks it around and presses the button over and over to change the color. It's extremely durable and it's water resistant, so it's fun for the whole family. Behind my desk is another Eve Energy somewhere back there in a mess. This is only connected to my speakers at my computer. I put this in so I could run a scene to turn my whole office on. So the scene will turn my computer on via wake on LAN. It turns my speakers on using the Eve Energy. And of course it was very simple to integrate my lights turning on. I decided to go with the Eve Energy simply because it was matter over thread. Last but not least on the tour is the Smart Wings Roller Shade. I talked about this a lot on last week's video. I still really love this shade, but it is still not charging via the solar panel which honestly I'm kind of okay with because I don't love the look of the solar panel. And if I want to open my window, I can't really open the top half of the window too far because it'll tug on that wire. I think I'm just going to charge it once or twice a year using the USB-C cable that they provided with it. So that is my Thread Smart Home Tour. I really hope you saw something you liked and you're inspired to build out a Thread network for yourself. I tried to put all the links in the description below. Thank you so much and I will see you next week.